Welcome to the second film in our Floors and Ceilings series. In it, we look at the role floors and ceilings play in load-bearing. Let us start by revisiting the classification of loads by duration. Dead or permanent loads refer to the self-weight of a structure, that is, all its load-bearing and non-load-bearing components, and to effects such as earth pressure, for example. Live loads are primarily traffic loads resulting from both the operation of a building and environmental loads such as snow and wind. Load direction is also important when considering static loads on floors and ceilings. Vertical loads generate forces that run towards the centre of the earth. Horizontal loads are primarily generated by wind and earth pressure. Load distribution is particularly important in the design of floors and ceilings. Loads are divided into three types by direction – surface loads, linear loads and single point loads. As you can imagine, a concentrated or single point load applied in the centre of a floor or ceiling produces a very high level of stress. I am sure that you also remember how external forces act within a component. Forces acting axially on a component generate axial forces within it. They may be compression or tension forces, depending on how they are applied. In floors and ceilings, the transfer of horizontal forces that generate internal compression forces is particularly important. Forces acting at right angles to a component generate perpendicular forces that can cause shear strain at the bearing point in a floor or ceiling. The application of torque causes bending that in turn generates compression and tension forces at the edges of floors and ceilings. In terms of load-bearing, a distinction is made between linear and single-point loads. In solid constructions where walls are the main load-bearing elements, floors sit on linear supports. In skeleton constructions, on the other hand, where the vertical load-bearing elements are column-type supports rather than walls, single-point load-bearing is the norm. It is here that the problem of shearing at the bearing point caused by perpendicular forces, a phenomenon known as punching shear, is an issue. You should also already be familiar with these three types of bearing – fixed clamp bearings, fixed pin bearings and guided bearings. A fixed clamp bearing is one in which one structural member is clamped rigidly in another, allowing the transfer of bending moments at the bearing. In fixed pin bearings, the bearing is fixed but not clamped and can therefore transfer vertical and horizontal forces but not moments. A guided bearing is one in which one member is able to move back and forth on the other and is so unable to transfer either moments or horizontal forces. Span direction is another key issue in the design of floors and ceilings. Here, we distinguish between one-way and two-way span directions. With a one-way span, most of the load is carried on the shorter span. A two-way span direction has the advantage that the thickness of the floor or ceiling can be dimensioned according to the shorter span width. A floor that projects beyond its bearing point, as in the case of a balcony for example, is known as a cantilever slab. The cantilever has a positive effect on load-bearing behaviour. The projecting part of the slab bends downwards, so reducing deflection at the centre of the span. You can see from the moment path shown here that with a cantilever slab, the switch from negative to positive moment takes place before the bearing point and not at the bearing point, as is the case with floors with no cantilever. This means that the span width for dimensioning is reduced by a factor of 0.8. When floors are supported at a number of bearing points, a multiple span effect is produced. As with a cantilever slab, the load on the individual spans is reduced, in some cases resulting in a reduction in span width of the middle spans of a factor of 0.6. A floor with a 5 meter span and no partition walls and no cantilever must be 19 centimeters thick. With a cantilever, that is to say with a span width of 5 by 0.8 equals 4 meters, it need only be 16 centimeters thick, while the central span of a multiple span floor need only be 13 centimeters thick due to the span width of 5 by 0.6 equals 3 meters. The most effective solution would therefore be a multiple span slab with cantilevers on both sides. Summary Load distribution is particularly important in the design of floors and ceilings. Loads are divided into three types by direction – surface, linear and single-point load distribution. 
In solid constructions, floors sit on linear supports. In skeleton constructions, they sit on single point supports. Span direction is a key issue in the design of floors and ceilings. It can be one way or two way. Why not take a look at the third film in our floors and ceiling series? In it, we discuss the different ways in which floors and ceilings can be constructed.